the city and the police union have essentially bargained away the public's right to police accountability behind closed doors. It's, it's unthinkable in this moment. And if we're talking about hundreds of thousands of records going up in smoke. The Chicago Police Union says it has a right to have the bulk of misconduct complaints against officers destroyed every five years. The Fraternal Order of Police, the union representing Chicago police officers, is asking the Illinois Supreme Court to allow them to destroy all police misconduct records older than five years. Interim Police Superintendent Charlie Beck says he has mixed thoughts on whether all misconduct records should remain public. outcry about police power. The Illinois Supreme Court is set to rule tomorrow on whether certain Chicago police misconduct records can be routinely destroyed. WGN's Megan Dwyer has the latest. Megan. Taman and Lord is the timing on this is just purely coincidental. The city of Chicago, though, says it has not destroyed any police misconduct records since 1991, though that could soon change. Talking about hundreds of thousands of records going up in smoke. The Chicago Police Union says it has a right to have the bulk of misconduct complaints against officers destroyed every five years. It's in their union contract. Some of them are the more serious allegations that are talked about with excessive force, civil rights violations, or criminal conduct. But you also have uniform violations. You have attendance issues. You have issues involving officers maybe working secondary employment when the rules don't allow them to have a second job. The Illinois Supreme Court heard oral arguments in the case back in March before shutting down because of COVID. No documents have been submitted for destruction since 1991. Most complaints are supposed to be destroyed after five years, but the city hasn't been doing that. Excessive force complaints are kept for seven years, but the worst of the worst, stuff that can get you suspended for more than a year or referred to the police review board can be kept forever. There's even an exception there for the city that if they believe there's a particular pattern or practice involving a particular officer, that they can come to the lodge and say, you know, we'd like to hold on to these records. University of Chicago professor Craig Futterman says the city and the police union have essentially bargained away the public's right to police accountability behind closed doors. It's unthinkable at this moment. And if the court sides with the police union tomorrow, the consequences could be severe. Is the police department doing what it needs to do to address officers engaged in patterns and practices, investigating them and get rid of them? If you blow up the evidence, there's no way to monitor what they're doing. So back in 1991, the city said it stopped destroying records because it kept getting sued. The professor I talked to today says he's particularly worried about this, what this might mean in torture cases. You may remember now disgraced cop John Burge and the alleged wrongdoing against him. That stuff didn't come to light until 10 years after the fact. So some of this is maintained in case there's a court case in terms of litigation. But this could mean that some of this evidence is destroyed before anyone can actually file a case. I'm live at home tonight. Megan Dwyer, back to you guys. The Fraternal Order of Police, the union representing Chicago police officers, is asking the Illinois Supreme Court to allow them to destroy all police misconduct records older than five years. Interim Police Superintendent Charlie Beck says he has mixed thoughts on whether all misconduct records should remain public. A bonfire of critical police misconduct records. Critics fear that could happen if Chicago's police union wins its fight to destroy those files. CBS2 political investigator Dana Koslov uncovers it's a fight the union is waging in court and behind the scenes at the bargaining table. This is the happiest day of my life. It's over. Emotions run high and the damage runs deep. I want justice for my son. Victims of police misconduct and their families forever changed. I'm struggling now, still struggling to this very day, 
of everyday just living. He just took my life away from me, from my family, from my daughter. Until five years ago, their struggle made even more difficult because police misconduct records were still secret, kept hidden, even though officer complaints were piling up, patterns of wrongdoing were developing, and taxpayers were shelling out tens of millions of dollars in brutality cases like those against former Chicago Police Commander John Burge. I exercise my Fifth Amendment right. Then these two men, Craig Futterman and Jamie Calvin, fought to get misconduct complaints released to the public and won. The Calvin case, I mean, it was a battle, wasn't it? It was a battle. It was um, close to 10 years of litigation and, um, you know, an extraordinary amount of work. Now that's all in jeopardy. Hundreds of thousands of records of police misconduct records can go up in smoke, and that means forever. Once they're gone, they're gone. The Fraternal Order of Police, the union representing Chicago police officers, is asking the Illinois Supreme Court to allow them to destroy all police misconduct records older than five years. And it couldn't come at a worse time. Just a year ago, Chicago police entered into a federal consent decree mandating reforms following decades of misconduct and even torture complaints. The data and information that's at stake in this case is of absolutely critical importance to that process. Especially since all the past misconduct resulted in little discipline for offending officers. Almost always the finding was in favor of the police officer. Futterman and Calvin say the records are critical to exposing patterns of misconduct that highlight problem officers. Take officer James Hunt. I caught on camera saying he kills. CBS2 investigator Brad Edwards uncovered that four years before Hunt's comments went viral, he did kill, shooting 17-year-old Deshaun Pittman 10 times. <laughs> you bitch. A deeper dive into Hunt's past found he had eight misconduct allegations against him in less than six years, and he's still on the street. That investigation is, is working its way to me, and I will make a decision. Interim Police Superintendent Charlie Beck says he has mixed thoughts on whether all misconduct records should remain public. I think that everybody understands that, that police officers are often subject to unfounded complaints, and and do the full details of those need to be revealed? I think that's a, a different question. Sustained complaints, you know, I don't have such an issue with. Past courts have repeatedly ruled misconduct records are public records. After Futterman yeah, and Calvin won but, their case, you know, if you look at our database, they put all the, CPD uh, misconduct uh, cases on this website, the Invisible Institute. They say if the FOP wins and gets the previous rulings reversed, basic information will stay on the website, but case details will be destroyed. All the evidence, I mean, the hardcore evidence, it's here are the statements themselves. The statements of officers, statements of witnesses, the underlying physical evidence, the underlying medical evidence. That would be destroyed. That would all be destroyed. And Futterman says destroying records wouldn't only be bad for victims. I feel like I was dragged by the devil. He says it could also make it hard to fire officers like Patrick Kelly, now before the police board facing termination. Kelly also has a history of complaints and cost the city a $44 million jury verdict after being accused of shooting friend Michael Laporta in the head. This one? Can you feel pain there? Yeah. It's a lot of pain. Record destruction, Futterman says, could also hurt the city. If they destroy these records, they will be unable to defend itself um, and in all this litigation and will be subject to, li to liability that will just blow up the city. Ultimately, he says it's the community that would suffer most, impacting CPD as it tries to restore broken trust. People don't trust the police. So this is the very kind of thing that is so critically necessary to our public safety, to solving violence, to getting rid of police abuse in Chicago, to finally addressing patterns and practices of civil rights violations. The FOP's president says the union is trying to do what's best for its members. But it's more than a Supreme Court case. Unions representing CPD rank and file and supervisors are also in arbitration with the city, trying to get record destruction put into their contracts. A spokesperson for the city says the mayor opposes the move, adding city government has an obligation to remain transparent. The Illinois Supreme Court is expected to hear this case this spring. In the newsroom, Dana Kozlov, CBS2 News, Brad and Erica. We'll be watching. Thank you.